Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Bars Guru and I've got another product shootout for you here on the channel today. This time around I'm looking at 120mm fans for use on CPU, coolers, and radiators. Now the inspiration for this review actually came from you, my viewers. Over the past six months or so, I've published a number of CPU cooler shootouts. And a lot of people have asked in the comments whether or not I would do a similar review for fans. This is that review. So thank you for asking me to do it. It just took me a while to think about how I would actually conduct the test. And the way I'm actually going to be doing it is using the H60 cooler that I featured in one of my recent shootouts. The H60 is a compact liquid cooler and a very popular one at that, and it happens to fit very nicely in my SG13 ITX chassis. So I'm going to be using this as my bench system. It uses a Ryzen 5 3600 CPU and has a GTX 1080 video card. I'm going to be mounting all of these fans on this cooler to see how they perform. And one of the advantages of the setup is that the fan will be mounted right in the front of the case, so I'll be able to get really good acoustic measurements in addition to the thermal measurements I'll be taking. Now, I should make clear that these are cooler fans, not case fans, and there is a big difference. A little bit later on in this review, I will go over the distinctions between those two types of fans so you know what you're looking at the next time you're shopping for a fan. Without further ado, let's get into the contenders and see what they offer. First up, we have the Arctic P12 PWM. It has a fluid dynamic bearing, costs just $10, and hits 1800 RPM. Then we have the Scythe Cosflex. It uses a fluid dynamic bearing, comes in at $14, and is rated for 1200 RPM. Then we have the Corsair ML120. It uses a magnetic levitation bearing. It comes in at $28, and is rated for 2400 RPM. Then we have Noctua's NF F12 PWM Chromax Black comes in at around $26. It's rated for 1500 RPM and uses the SSO2 bearing. Then we have Noctua's NF812 X25 PWM, comes in at $30, is rated for 2000 RPM and also uses an SSO2 bearing. Then we have the Be Quiet Pure Wings 2. This comes in at around $20. It hits 1500 RPM and uses a rifle bearing. Finally, we have the Be Quiet Silent Wings 3. It uses a Fluid dynamic bearing hits 1500 RPM and comes in at $26. Now before we go any further, I want to talk a little bit about fan design. I am specifically testing fans designed for coolers. That's a static pressure environment. It's not a high airflow environment. On the left here is the F120 from Arctic. That is a 1800 RPM fan, but it's designed for high airflow. I'm actually going to be testing the P12 on the right which is a static pressure design with the same 1800 RPM. What you'll notice as the distinguishing feature between an airflow and a static pressure fan is the number and shape of the blades. Airflow fans typically have more blades that are thinner, whereas static pressure fans typically have fewer blades that are thicker. Let's revisit this concept as we look again at the fans I'm testing in this roundup. Between the two Be Quiet fans, the Silent Wings does look to have the wider blades versus the Pure Wings. Then between the Noctua fans, actually the new NF-A12 X25 looks like an airflow fan, but Noctua claims it's just as good on a cooler. Looking at the Corsair fan, ML120 clearly optimized for static pressure with those fewer blades that are quite wide. The Scythe fan actually looks like an airflow fan due to the great number of blades that are quite thin, but it's used on a lot of Scythe coolers, so we're going to give this a try. It's done great on the Scythe Fluma 2. Then the Arctic P12, as I discussed, is a pressure optimized fan with those thick blades. So getting into the idle benchmark here, these are about the lowest RPMs you'll see in these fans. I should note that Idle is kind of a subjective concept with CPUs because they're constantly fluctuating. So I recorded the lowest temp that I saw during the idle and the lowest sound level. And unlike any other reviewer on the net, I always pair my thermal readings with my sound readings because I don't think you can view those separately. They are really part of the same equation. So start with the noise levels. Those are the orange bars. Draw your attention to the shortest bars in this graph. They are the two Be Quiet fans. Be Quiet really does a great job in living up to its name. It makes really quiet products. And it's not just because the RPMs are low. Yes, they are low. But if you look at the Corsair SP120 or the Noctua NFF12, they have similar RPMs and yet they're quite a bit louder. Be Quiet simply tunes its products for very low noise levels. 
Now, their temps are a little bit higher here, and we're going to see when we get into some load configurations that it gets a little bit worse for Be Quiet, but here they are very, very quiet. There's no doubt about it. All the other fans are kind of in a similar range except for one that really stands out. That's the Corsair ML120. Part of the problem is that this is a very high RPM fan rated to 2400. So even at idle, it's at 1341. That is too high. It turns out that high RPMs aren't the only enemy of the Corsair ML120, as we will see later in this roundup when I do set all of these fans to an equivalent RPM. Now, the other fans that are a little bit disappointing at idle are the A-series fans from Noctua. Now, these have a lot of enthusiasts that really claim them to be the best fans in the business, and they may well be, but they aren't the quietest at idle because they are rated to very high RPMs. And that means when you bring them down, they're still going pretty fast, and they're still running pretty loud. That surprisingly makes them louder than the Noctua NFF12, which is based on a much older design, but does rotate at a lower RPM. And it also makes the A-series fans far louder at idle than the Be Quiet models, which are truly quiet specialists. Moving on to the CPU-Z stress test, which I view as a really good approximation of a gaming engine. It pushes the CPU to 100%, but not all 100% loads are created equal, and this one is actually a pretty reasonable one. Again, looking at the orange bars to start, we try to find the quietest fans and then find the coolest fans. The Scythe Cos Flex is indeed the quietest fan here, but that's partly because it's the lowest RPM fan, and it just doesn't have the power or the design to keep temperatures as low as we would like to see them. Moving on to the other very quiet fans in this benchmark, of course, Be Quiet is there. And surprisingly, so is the Arctic P12 PWM. It does really, really well here at only 43.5 decibels and 67 degrees. It is bested by the more expensive Silent Wings 3 from Be Quiet, and arguably it's also bested by the NFA 12X25 from Noctua, which spins at a very high 1991 RPM, but it's only 44 decibels. That's actually pretty quiet for such a high RPM rating. And of course, it wins this test with a 64 degree benchmark. I hate to do this to Corsair, but I'm going to have to point out the noise levels of its two fans, the ML120 and SP120. They are unacceptable, particularly the ML120. I was just completely disappointed by this fan. 58 decibels is outrageous. It should not be on the market. This fan is just an abomination. I mean, Noctua's NFA 12X15, a super slim fan that comes in at just 20 bucks, can match the temperature rating and hits only 45 decibels. There's just something wrong with Corsair's fan design. They have to go back to the drawing board. One other model I do need to call out here is the Be Quiet Pure Wings 2. I found some anomalies in testing this fan in that it could initially maintain fairly low temps, but quickly got out of control, hitting 73 degrees here, the highest in this benchmark. And I think it's because this is truly not a static pressure fan. It's an airflow fan, and although it is equipped on some of Be Quiet's coolers, it's not a really good cooler or radiator fan. It's really a case fan. And you see that result here with the thermals. It's actually very quiet, but I'd only recommend it in a case cooling application. And even then, I'd actually go with the Scythe Cos Flex over it because it's a little bit quieter, it's quite a bit cheaper, and it has a fluid dynamic bearing, so it's rated for a much longer lifespan than the Be Quiet Pure Wings 2, which has a rifle bearing. Moving on to the Cinebench R15 benchmark, this is a very intense application. It really pushes the CPU to a full 100% load, and therefore we're gonna see slightly higher thermals here than in CPU-Z. Again, let's focus on the quiet fans, those shortest orange bars to start. We actually see the Arctic P12 right down there along with the Be Quiet fans. Scythe Cos Flex is good in terms of noise, but it's not good in terms of thermals. It's not a winning fan here in terms of a radiator fan. Overall, I'm actually most impressed with that Arctic P12. Folks, this is a $10 fan, competing with fans that go for $20 and up, and in some cases, beating them. It actually matches the Be Quiet Silent Wings 3 in terms of noise, more or less, but is actually much better in terms of thermals. That's a $26 fan. It's just as good as Noctua's slim fan, the A12X15. It's actually quieter with the same thermals, and it nearly catches up with the Noctua NF A12X25, a $30 fan. 
and that's despite having noise levels that are lower than that A-series fan. Arctic clearly went with a clean slate when it designed the P12. It doesn't look like any of the other fans in this roundup, and its performance is exceptional, particularly considering the $10 price tag. Now I have one more set of benchmarks for you. This is Cinebench R15 run again, but with a fixed RPM, around 1275 RPM. Now this is actually not as simple as it sounds because of the way that pulse width modulation works. Essentially what you're doing is targeting specific percentages of the maximum RPM of a given fan. And therefore you can't actually hit 1275 with every fan. You're basically gonna be plus or minus 50 RPM. That's as good as you can get in terms of equalizing these fans. Even so, I do think there's a lot of value to looking at the benchmarks this way, and it really draws out the winners of this roundup, the Noctua A-series fans and the Arctic P12 PWM. They are by far the quietest here, and they are also among the coolest. Now, the Be Quiet fans, which are so good at very low RPMs, really fall to the back of the pack here. They're still relatively quiet, but they're really overloaded in terms of thermals. And it just goes to show that these fans really operate best at extremely low RPM levels. Basically, they're great for idle and they're not really great for much else. Another thing that actually disqualifies the Silent Wings 3, in my opinion, is the odd form over function mounting system that Be Quiet uses. Those wings may look cool on the side, but they mean that a lot of mounting systems won't accommodate them. Here it pulls through my case. You'd also have problems if you use standard fan clips on these fans. The other fan that sort of surprised me in terms of its performance characteristics was the Noctua NFF-12, long regarded as the best 120 millimeter fan on the market. It's still a top seller, but frankly, it's outdated and outclassed. The thermals here are fine, in fact they're the best, but the acoustics are terrible. 42 decibels is just shockingly loud for this low of an RPM level. Clearly, this fan was designed around hitting very low noise levels at low RPM and then getting great performance at higher RPMs, but it's just not tuned well for this mid-range RPM where your system's often going to be running. At this point, it's pretty clear that the Noctua NFF-12 has passed its prime and it's time to put this fan out to pasture. Enthusiasts simply shouldn't buy the NFF-12 today. But don't ignore the fact that this older design clearly had an impact on the industry as a whole, pushing Noctua's competitors to up their game in order to try to catch this great older design. Unfortunately, what we don't see is Corsair leading the pack even at a fixed RPM. At 1278 RPM, it's still among the loudest fans here, so you can't just blame its very high maximum RPM for its poor acoustic performance. And in terms of thermals, it's actually above average as well. So overall, despite a $28 price tag, it's simply not a premium fan. And I think part of the problem is that the fan blade design is totally outdated. And Corsair focused too much on its bearings. Those magnetic levitation bearings may be an advantage over fluid dynamic bearings, but we'd never know because the fan blade design is so inferior. Note that I dropped Corsair's SP120 here because it's actually not even a retail fan, it's just a fan that comes on the H60 cooler that I'm using. And lastly, I'll mention the Scythe Cause Flex here. It's actually out of its element in this roundup. It's simply not a good static pressure fan. It's not a fan that I'd recommend for coolers or radiators, despite the fact that it's used to great effect on Scythe's own Fuma 2, my favorite cooler ever released. My hunch is that Scythe just knows this fan backwards and forwards and designed the Fuma 2 around its strengths. All right, I've shown you all the benchmarks, and I think they make pretty clear which fans lead the pack here. But I know there are some people out there who just don't accept benchmarks, who think that decibel readings don't mean anything at all. Now, I disagree with that, but for those of you who need to hear for yourself, well, feast your ears on this. I'm going to let you listen to nearly all the fans in this roundup at both idle and load, starting with the Arctic P12. Idle. Full speed. Here's the Be Quiet Pure Wings 2 at idle. And here it is at full load. This is the Be Quiet Silent Wings 3 at idle. And this is full load. This is the Corsair at idle. And here it is at full load. 
Here's the Noctua NF-A12X25 at idle. And here it is at full load. This is the Noctua NF-F12 at idle. And here it is at full load. Here's the Scythe Cause Flex at idle. And here it is at load. All right, you've seen the benchmarks. You've heard all these fans for yourself. At this point, it's probably pretty clear which ones lead the pack. Without a doubt, the NF-A12X25 from Noctua is the best fan in this roundup, but it should be at $30. Noctua clearly didn't rest on its laurels. The NF-F12, which has been the benchmark for so many years, is outclassed by a lot of the fans in this roundup, and the X25 clearly distanced itself from that older design. With that said, Noctua does not win the award for price performance. That award goes to the P12 PWM from Arctic. This fan is simply amazing for the $10 price point it comes in at. I didn't expect it to keep up with these competitors, but frankly, it beat most of them. If you want a fantastic upgrade for your cooler or radiator and don't want to spend a lot of money, this is the fan you want to use. It really shouldn't come as a surprise because in my recent 120 millimeter CPU cooler roundup, the Arctic Freezer 34 Duo did really admirably given the low price point. It uses the Bionics version of the P12 fan and that uses a similar five blade design. Again, it's a static pressure design optimized for radiators and coolers. Now, that doesn't mean that the P12 is an all around general purpose fan. I would not use it as a case fan. It's not optimized for that. Arctic does have its separate line of F12 and F120 fans that you can use for your case if you want a low cost fan that's still very effective. If you have any comments or questions, please post them down below. I'll do my best to get back to you. As always, I really do appreciate a like or subscribe if you enjoyed the video. That gives me a sign that you want to see more content like this in the future. And as always, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I'll catch you next time.